If a forest has been listed as a national park, that usually means it's protected. But sadly, that's not worked out for the Maraho National Park in Ivory Coast. It has lost over 90% of its forest cover, and there are settlements within the park that shouldn't be there. Poaching is another problem, along with logging for firewood. Plus, land has also been cleared for agriculture. A local NGO is working to create awareness of the problem. A look around the dense bush of Maroe National Park gives the impression of a thriving ecosystem. Tracks indicate that antelopes passed by here recently. But a more thorough inspection reveals troubling signs. Dilapidated dwellings, abandoned firewood, and a space apparently cleared to be turned into a plantation. Chief Jacques Lopoabi Gourizon from the nearby village is angry. He blames migrants for the destruction. He's also critical of the government for declaring the region a national park, but not doing enough to protect it. We created this park we use it to eat. We use it a lot. The park is next to the village. We live next to it. The moment they came, they said they will take our park. I said, if you take our park, what are you going to do? The chief says the village of Gobazra has relied on the forest for centuries, and everyone uses it sustainably. He says people only take what they need. These young men just returned from collecting some of life's basics. We've collected firewood, fruits to eat, and some medicines, as we were told to by the village elders. The medicine is used to cure stomach aches and vomiting caused by typhoid. Firewood is taken mainly from fallen trees and branches that will grow back. But not everyone is so careful when using this land. Park facilities have been neglected. Squatters have encroached on the land, poaching animals and destroying habitats. Maraway Park's proximity to the cities of Abidjan and Yamoussoukro have made it a haven for those displaced by political violence and instability in recent years. During the turmoil, managing a park was no one's priority. Corruption is making things worse. The government's done nothing for us. They've done nothing. They came to build a welcome centre. There was a lot of money earmarked for it, apparently. But where did it go? They've done nothing at Gobazra. An illegal cocoa plantation deep inside Maroué. Crops bring cash, which can also be used to bribe officials into not evicting the illegal farmers. 93% of the forest of Maroué National Park has already been destroyed. Reforestation is essential. This successful project was backed by the Abidjan-based NGO ROSI. We have one program that focuses on the acacia trees. It aims to teach the population not to go deep into the forest and destroy trees. Acacia trees are easy to plant. They grow fast and can withstand both flooding and drought. Local residents use their wood and leaves, as well as the gum that the tree produces, for medicine. Other trees planted include cashew nuts, neem and teak trees. We're a local NGO. There's only so much we can do. We don't have the means to raise full awareness. That would require touching the whole population. So currently, we're looking for partners to help us. The NGO works with the villagers, teaching them how to use the forest even more sustainably. But that alone will not be sufficient. Only if the government does its part will the national park be protected and the villagers have a chance once again to live from their forest. Take a look at my background right here. There's lots of plastic waste around the entire compound, but this is just land. And 
Plastic waste is a huge problem for our planet, affecting humans and animals. The problem is, plastic doesn't decompose easily and that's having a dramatic effect on the world's oceans. A United Nations conference in New York entitled Our Oceans, Our Future aims to find ways to tackle the problem. Eight million tons of plastic end up in our oceans every year. One film crew decided to take a closer look and made some alarming discoveries. Take a look. The oceans have become a garbage dump. Plastic waste can be found in bodies of water all over the planet. Documentary filmmaker Greg Leeson and his team are always amazed by what they find. This is all some of the rubbish that we found in the floating jetsam and flotsam in the ocean. You get Ben to go through it, but there's even a pack of, of unopened biscuits. You can see it's been there for some time. The, uh, the mollusks that are growing off it. There's crabs. There's a crab in there. Yeah, look. So, uh, quite extraordinary. The film crew traveled the world monitoring plastic levels, and they were shocked by their findings. Produced by an international environmental group, their documentary, A Plastic Ocean, makes you wonder whether our seas can still be saved. Unbelievable. Once plastic reaches the sea, it slowly breaks down into tiny particles which are consumed by fish and other marine life. Jen, I counted 234 pieces of plastic out of that one bird. Is that a record? Not even close, unfortunately. So for the species, the record is 276 pieces of plastic inside of one 90-day-old chick. And that plastic, when we weighed it out, accounted for 15% of that bird's body mass. So that's a pretty scary statistic. The film also looks at projects that are seeking to tackle the problem. One of them is the plastic bank. It sets up recycling stations. People can collect plastic waste and bring it to the bank. In exchange, they can then charge their cell phone using solar power, get free cooking oil, and more. The plastic waste is then recycled and sold on as usable material. Sean Frankson co-founded the Plastic Bank. He came to Berlin for the screening of the documentary. One of the things that we discovered is that 80% of ocean plastic starts on land. And the reason is because people throw it away, they throw it in the rivers, the waterways, and they do it because they see waste as something with no value. But if we can reveal the value in waste, we can make plastic waste too valuable to ever enter the ocean. The Canadian is a man on a mission. After a screening of the film in Berlin, he tells the audience how he plans to expand his recycling system into a global initiative. Currently, uh, more than just setting up one location at a time, I've been working with IBM to build a blockchain-based digital exchange system so that instead of us doing one location at a time, we can have an app that anywhere, anyone in the world can download the app and start participating in these recycling ecosystems. And whether they're collecting plastic, whether they're running a collection point. In 2015, the Plastic Bank launched full operations in Haiti. It's also active in parts of Asia. With the new digital app, they'll be able to go into Africa too. Plastic waste is mounting in many African countries. A lot of it ends up in the sea. So can our oceans be saved? The film crew behind A Plastic Ocean is convinced they can, but their film is sounding the alarm. It's clear that action is needed, and fast.